I'd like to talk about another story in uh, Dronacharya's life, where Ekalaiva, who belonged to a lower caste uh, tribal archer, he was such a uh, uh, good archer, and he, he was better than uh, Arjuna himself. But because he comes from a tribal community, scheduled community, he uh, was deprived that, and he his finger, tongue was cut off, and that is the Dakshna. Dronacharya, the great Dronacharya wanted from his student. So the same caste has not gone away. The same caste politics, the same caste oppression is still there. In sports today, how many children from Dalit communities, how many women get opportunity to play? Trans people, they are not men, they are not women, so they have no space, uh, especially in a place called Govilpati. Uh, children uh, love playing hockey. How many of them can afford to buy a uh, hockey stick? How many of them can even afford to buy shoes? How many of them can afford to buy clothes? Uh, natural swimmers from coastal areas. How many people, how many swimmers are encouraged from coastal areas? Okay. Why is it that no swimmer comes from coastal areas? They are born to swim, they know. I completely agree with the most of the speakers who've uh, spoken before me and have insisted that uh, sports should be part of uh, our education system, it should be made mandatory. And uh, we've seen that uh, many of the schools today, and especially private institutions, do not have any space for children to play. Uh, we see advertisements that the classrooms have air condition, but there's no uh, place for the children to come out and play. Yeah. And uh, if children do not learn team spirit, if children are not allowed to play, how will they have a healthy life? How will they f uh, understand that being together, maybe uh, being together is not a good word in these days, but I think team spirit and uh, people coming together, uh, uh, you know, uh, beyond differences is the most important thing and we have to che teach children that and uh, one more thing which is uh, we should understand uh, we keep talking about uh, the strength our strength that uh, india lives in its rural uh, uh, cities and uh, i mean rural in its villages but do we encourage sports do we reach these children in rural areas in villages do we support them do we help them how many of them can uh, uh, in my constituency, uh, hockey, uh, especially in a place called Kovilpati, uh, children uh, love playing hockey. How many of them can afford to buy uh, hockey sticks? How many of them can even afford to buy shoes? How many of them can afford to buy clothes? Uh, how do we reach these children? How do we support them? And uh, we do not have hockey turfs in most of the places. We do not have, uh, uh, you know, you know uh, uh, the, uh, uh, children who want to run. They are not able to have, they don't have tracks to run. Uh, how do they practice? Um, uh, what happens to their dreams? How do uh, they get uh, the same standards, the same opportunities as children in cities and in developed nations get? And uh, you have a scheme uh, in Fit India also and in Samarga Siksha Abhyan to uh, give uh, equipment, sports equipment to, to schools. Uh, sadly, in uh, some schools get from both the schemes, and some schools are completely ignored and they do not get anything. And I'd like to know what kind of accountability is there to uh, make sure that schools are not ignored. And most of the top associations in this country, sports association, are ridden with politics and interference from politics, politicians, power games, corruption. How will they be able, and many of them, uh, people here have mentioned that it is the bureaucrats and the politicians who control these associations, and they are the ones who actually have the say, the final say in the life of sports people. They decide who has to be selected, the, who, are, who has talent. It is not going to be unbiased. So how are we going to make sure that there is justice? And uh, um, the speaker before me, um, Bharat, when he spoke, he was talking about uh, Dronacharya. And uh, 
I'd like to talk about another story in uh, Dronacharya's life, where Ekalaiva, who belonged to a lower caste, uh, tribal uh, person, who learned um, to shoe, I mean, he, he was so good um, um, as a... Yeah. Archer. He was such a uh, uh, good archer, and he, he was better than uh, Arjuna himself. But because he comes from a tribal community, scheduled community, he uh, was deprived that, and he, his finger, tongue was cut off. And that is the Dakshina, Dronacharya, the great Dronacharya wanted from his student. So the same caste has not gone away. The same caste politics, the same caste oppression is still there in sports today. How many children from Dalit communities, how many women get opportunities to play? Are, when in a village, when people cannot touch each other, when uh, they can't walk on the same streets, how will these children be allowed to play in a team? They will not. Uh, you know that uh, team games like Kabaddi or hockey or... Yes, hockey. You're not allowed to play. So what are we going to do to reach out to these, to make sure that, I mean, we're not uh, saying you'll have to bring in reservation in this also, but at least you must do something to protect these people, to make sure, ensure there's justice to women. And uh, you know what kind of a struggle it is for women to get into sports. It's not easy to convince the families. It's not, it's not easy. And when they come into sports, the kind of abuse, sexual abuse, the kind of abuse they have to face. How are we going to protect these women who come into sports? And what kind of uh, importance do we give Paralympics? Nobody talks about it. Nobody cares. I think they have uh, the same right. People with, who are differently abled have the same right as everybody else to express their talent and trans people, they are not men, they are not women, so they have no space. Just give me a minute more. And I think today sports has moved on. We have to have science and coaching, science and activity together. The food, the, uh, somebody has to monitor how, what their talent is, what their weakness is. And uh, if there's a sports injury, you, you see so many of these sports people who are injured. And because they do not have access to, uh, you know, facilities to make sure, that, to correct these injuries, they, they, their life comes to an end. So how are we going to support these people? And uh, I know this government does not, uh, approve of uh, ha, you know high protein diet in many cases, but uh, sports people need high protein diet. Uh, we have to ensure that. So we have to understand that diet, science, everything has to be taken into consideration if we want to really see more sports people, more people coming into sports, and more young people uh, to be encouraged in sports. And I, I'd also like to ask, why is it that our swimmers, uh, natural swimmers from coastal areas, how many people, how many swimmers are encouraged from coastal areas? Okay. Why is it that no swimmer comes from coastal areas? They are born to swim, they know. But we do not encourage them. We have to consider all this. Thank you. Thank you.